do this. Welcome back, viewers, to another dive in Hollywood movies. In space, no one can hear you scream. The movie theater is a different story. The spine-chilling sci-fi horror franchise Alien returns with Alien Romulus, featuring a new crew of young, scrappy space explorers. Unluckily for them, there are also facehuggers, chestbursters, and xenomorphs on board, as seen in the trailers and a terrifying viral marketing campaign featuring facehugger puppets attacking actors here on Earth. If Alien Romulus is your first foray into the series' twisted future world, though, you might feel a bit lost in space. When in the Alien timeline does Romulus take place? Does iconic heroine Ripley return? And why do these aliens keep bursting out of people's chests? Here's what you need to know about the Alien films ahead of the latest installment. What are Xenomorphs? The long-headed, sharp-toothed, off-drooling villains are some of the scariest monsters put to screen. On top of their extraterrestrial strength, height, and cunning, they've got acidic blood that eats through spaceships. But really, they just want to populate space by stuffing their embryos inside the husks of human bodies. Most who stand in their way meet a speedy end. Facehuggers stick their embryos down the throats of unwilling hosts. All seems well until the embryo is ready to make its debut. A xenomorph's life begins when a queen lays eggs which can survive in stasis for years until they sense a viable host is near. Eventually, a freaky, spider-like facehugger will hatch from an egg and, true to its name, latch onto a host's face and force an embryo down their unwilling gullets. Said host will soon experience throbbing chest pain. That pain has a name. A poor host meets their end when the tiny toothy chest burster erupts from their body, claiming their life. Out pops a bloodthirsty little Xeno with a spindly tail. Once they've exploded their host's chest, a Xeno quickly morphs into an adult and begins to hunt the rest of the crew. The most fearsome of all adult Xenomorphs is the Queen, towering and murderously defensive of her brood. She's no match for series heroine Ellen Ripley and an airlock. There was also, controversially, a Xenomorph human hybrid creature in 1997's fourth franchise installment, Alien Resurrection. In Alien Resurrection, Ripley 8, a cloned version of Ellen Ripley, finds herself in a disturbing laboratory where a series of grotesque, failed experiments are laid bare. It's in this chilling setting that the unsettling concept of a hybrid creature born from the fusion of human and xenomorph DNA, first emerges, adding a new layer of horror to the franchise's already terrifying lore. It's as disturbing as it sounds. Jesus. The Xenomorphs are traditional bad guys, violent, murderous, otherworldly, but the consciously evil villains of the Alien series are the heads of the Wayland yutani Corporation, the ubiquitous company that attempts to dominate the universe by sacrificing its unwitting employees to the aliens that it hopes to eventually capture and turn into weapons. At least the aliens are concerned with the survival of their own kind. Who are we rooting for? The series' most memorable protagonist is Ellen Ripley, a space crew warrant officer played with inimitable grit by Sigourney Weaver. Over four films, she's joined in space by a crew of scientists, soldiers, or officers, though nearly every single one of them dies, usually at the hands of the Xenomorphs. She's the ultimate final girl. The crew of Alien Romulus is entirely new. 
They're led by Rain, played by Priscilla standout Kylie Spaney and her team of young space explorers. They're on an unsanctioned mission to a deserted space station. Hold such an iconic space in cinematic history. Rain, are you sure about this? Only one way to find out. I've been such a fan of the Alien franchise. And action! The first photo that went up at the board was Kaylee's. It's been amazing to see her becoming the character. She's fighting for her life. With Romulus, there are now seven official Alien films. Four of them feature Ripley, 1979's original, the James Cameron-directed sequel Aliens from 1986, Alien 3, directed by David Fincher in 1992, and Jean-Pierre Genet. Alien Resurrection from 1997. That last one is widely regarded as the worst in the series. It brings back Ripley as a juiced-up clone after she sacrificed herself at the end of Alien 3. She just can't catch a break with those xenomorphs. Logan Marshall Green, Numi Rapace, and Michael Fassbender as the chillingly evil android David star in Alien prequel Prometheus. There are two prequels to the Alien films, too, both helmed by original director Ridley Scott, 2012 Prometheus and Alien Covenant from 2017. Those films feature perhaps the most evil android in the series, David, an unassuming blonde servant obsessed with engineering a perfect life form, like an alien that looks suspiciously like a xenomorpha. What is your name? Walter. They are Walter. Where does Alien, Romulus's fall in the series timeline? Romulus is set in between the first two Alien films, which are set over 50 years apart, but both feature Ripley, who survived in cryostasis. Prometheus, 2093, Alien Covenant, 2104, Alien, 2122, Alien Romulus, around 20 years after Alien, Alien, say 2179, Alien 3, 2179, Alien Resurrection, 2381. And about the new film's name, Romulus is a nod to Roman mythology and the relationship between twin brothers Romulus and Remus. Director Fed Alvarez said recently, We won't divulge too much about the myth to avoid spoiling Romulus, but expect family to be a major thematic of focus. What about those Alien vs. Predator films? Those aren't really considered canon to the Alien universe. The crossover films don't quite fit neatly into either franchise, though they're entertaining for fans eager to see the titular baddies face off and creatively dispatch humans. In the second AVP film, they even hybridized to form the dreadlocked Predalien. Aim it towards Andy, pull the trigger halfway. Don't worry, the safety's on. Aiming assistance. Head over to our channel now to take our ultimate quiz and rank the xenomorph against other iconic movie creatures. Don't forget to cast your vote in our latest poll. We want to know who you think is the greatest movie monster of all time. That's it from Hollywood. We'll see you next time right here on Film Exclusive. And don't forget to become a member of the fellow Flickers for exclusive content, behind the scenes insights, and much more. Keep flicking.